So this is the Ski and C, as I like to call it. It's a 500 millimeter X car from Inventables hacked into a two meter by 500 millimeter beast of a machine. How I did that was I purchased four one meter sections of this stuff called Maker Slide. It's like a aluminum extrusion with two V-shaped lips that, um, yeah, pretty user-friendly stuff that you can bolt together and make CNC machines out of. The rest of the frame, because there's a little bit of a framework underneath of this spoil board here, is made out of 20 series 80-20. Uh, that means it's like 20 millimeters by 20 millimeters. That stuff was perfectly compatible with all the original hardware that came with the X-Carve, so upgrading the machine with that was super easy. I uh, created a 3D model of it in Fusion 360. And verified I had all the right dimensions and sizes, but it was pretty simple and if you just bought some of that stuff off the shelf you could always cut it with traditional woodworking tools and be good to go. I bought a bunch of little corner brackets and stuff that I put all through the frame underneath to hold everything together. Yeah, let's take a little closer look at some of the little parts. The X-Carve uses a DeWalt router for its spindle. It's like a DeWalt 611. It's got a quarter inch collet and really can power through any hardwood and even up to softer metals if you want. I had to purchase uh, some extension for the alligator track, uh, cable routing, chain link trunking, whatever you want to call it, that stuff. So I'll try and find the part number because I found stuff on Amazon that perfectly matched up with the X-Carve. You can see my funky transition somewhere in here. Oh, here it is. Right here, I go from the original X-Carve alligator track to the other stuff that I bought off Amazon. And it was super lucky that this stuff literally just snapped together. I also got out the soldering iron and extended the cables. Um, I want to say I used 14 gauge stranded, just what I had laying around my little electronics workstation cable because yeah, I had to extend those. I got super lucky that the DeWalt router's um, extension cord barely but legitimately does reach the end of the line there. Uh, the uh, machine comes with a little selection of bits. Uh, the first project I did was creating a holder for them. And yeah, that's that. This is the controller for the machine. They call it the X controller. You can plug it into your computer simply with a USB cable and they provide free software for both uh, model creation and G-code, like our uh, G-code sender slash machine control. That software is awesome because it's free and you can just change the parameters to make the machine bigger. There's no worry about, you know, the machine running to the end of a theoretical travel and not being able to go any further. You simply just enter in a value into one of their parameters and bam, you got yourself a two meter by 500 millimeter machine. Let's see. I made the uh, spoil board here out of some MDF. I have a vinyl cutter, so I added some nice stickers. Uh, I think it's just half inch MDF with a bunch of threaded inserts that I brought up from the bottom. There's about an eighth inch or so of clearance on those lips. I picked the right threaded inserts to be compatible with all the hold downs that I already got from the X-Carve. And yeah, finally I, at one point, had access to a 3D printer and I 3D printed a uh, dust boot. The dust boot is available, I want to say, on 3D CAD Central. I put it up there in case you have a 3D printer and you want to take this thing on. 
This thing's actually pretty awesome, but I'm here in a new shop and I haven't set up my dust collection yet, so that's just sitting there collecting dust. In my uh, previous shop, I had a nice hose hanging down from the ceiling right above the machine, so you could plug it right into that dust collector and save yourself some cleanup time. That pretty much does it. That is what's going on with the Ski and C. Now, one other custom uh, feature of this setup is my vacuum table. So let's take a look at that. So what you see here is my vacuum table. It's simply two pieces of this ultra light duty fiberboard uh, glued together. The bottom piece has a bunch of channels machined into it that allow the air to be like evenly distributed, the vacuum pressure to be evenly distributed. And then the top piece is just a nice support piece for whatever you're trying to cut. I created an adapter with a 3D printer. Um, I usually don't leave it connected because it can break off, but that just inserts right in there. And then it adapts out to a shop vac. I use a six and a half horsepower shop vac, uh, and that provides just enough suction to hold our you know, approximately six foot long by 16 inch wide base material down. I seal the edges with some tape. I've also gone through and sealed the edges of the um, vacuum table with silicone and the bottom, uh, I think with some glue. And that pretty much does the trick, this thing holds flat material down really well and it's also low enough profile to stick onto the CNC. So this is one of my favorite tools in the shop. It's a drag knife from Donick Tools. They also make snowboards so it was kind of a purpose-built tool for this industry. And uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. It's just like a quarter inch collet, a nice machined bearing assembly with a aluminum like razor blade support that uh, has interchangeable razor blades. So this thing you mount in your CNC, program your G-code to follow the perimeter of the design of your ski, and its little bearing allows it to pivot with, I think down to like an eighth inch turning radius. So this thing's sweet for building skis. You can't do perfectly right angled corners, but that's why you see me in there notching out the uh, edge with a razor. Um, yeah, this is the tool I use to cut out the base material with my vacuum table on the CNC.